Welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Raja Priya, Professor and HOD of Anatomy, Government Medical College, Thiruvallur. Today's class is Joints, Orthrology. Objectives of this session is, at the end of this session, the first year MBBS students must be able to describe various joints with subtypes and examples. And they have to explain the concept of nerve supply of joints and Hilton's law. Introduction. What is meant by a joint? Joint is nothing but a junction between two or more bones and sometimes bones and cartilage. It is nothing but a device which permits slight movements or more movements. There are different types of bones in our body. There are long bones, flat bones and short bones. When long bones are united together, they will unite at the ends. Flat bones will unite at the margins and short or irregular bones will unite at the surfaces or articulate at the surfaces. What is meant by articulation or arthrosis? See most of the terms in medicine are derived from Greek and Latin. So this articulation and arthrosis is derived from a Latin word which is called as joint. In Greek arthron means joint. Classify the joints based on degree of mobility of joints and based on the type of connective tissue present in between the joints or the presence or absence of joint cavity between the two bones. Functional classification. Functional classification as I already told is based on the function whether mobility is present or not. There are three types of joint in functional classification. One is called as synarthrosis. This is called as synarthrosis where the joints are immobile. This is a immobile joint. This is an example of synarthrosis. This is an example of synarthrosis and this is an example for amphiarthrosis where slight mobility will be present and this is an example for diarthrosis where mobility is very good. The joints are freely mobile. The examples of three joints are synarthrosis is present in skull bones and amphiarthrosis are present and diarthrosis are present in most of the synovial joints. Structural classification is based on the type of fiber or the type of connective tissue present between two bones. If fibrous connective tissue is present between two skull bones, it is called as fibrous joint. It is usually immobile. It is usually immobile and it lacks joint cavity. Cartilaginous joint or those joints where hyaline cartilage or fibrocartilage will be present between the two bones and it lacks joint cavity. Synovial joint is that joint where the joint cavity is covered by a fibrous capsule, joint cavity will be present and it will be filled with synovial fluid. So, this is an example of fibrous joint where only fibers will be present and this is an example of cartilaginous joint where cartilage is present and this is an example of synovial joint where joint cavity will be present. Coming to the different types of fibrous joint. Fibrous joint can be classified into three types. They are sutures, syndesmosis and gomphosis. Sutures are those which where the joint is held together with very short interconnecting fibers and the bony edges will interlock. The very good example for suture is present in skull. Syndesmosis where the joints are held together by a ligament. Here the fibrous tissue is very long when compared to sutures and slight degree of movement will be present in syndesmosis. Gomphosis is here pegan socket fibrous joint where the periodontal ligament holds the tooth in socket. See this is a picture where the teeth is present in a bone. This teeth is held in a socket present in the bone and between this teeth and the bone there is a ligament called as 
periodontal ligament. You can see the periodontal ligament here. Coming to the subtypes of sutures, we saw what are the sutures here. This is a suture where the joint is held together with very short interconnecting fibers and the bony edges interlock. Now, there are some subtypes in suture. What are the subtypes in suture? How they are classified uh, into various subtypes or depending upon the shape and margin of articular surfaces. If the shape and the margin of articular surfaces are plain, then it is called as plain suture. If it is serrate, then it is called as serrate suture and if it is overlapping with each other, beveled and overlapping with each other, it is called a squamous suture and if it is uh, having tooth like projections, it is called as denticulate suture. These are the different types of suture. What are they? Plain suture, when the margins are plain, serrate suture, when the margins are serrate in appearance, squamous suture, when the margins are overlapping, and denticulate suture when the margins are tooth like appearance and another special type of suture is there called as wedge and groove suture. Wedge and groove suture which is otherwise called as shindalysis where there is a wedge like bone which fits into the groove like another bone. Example for this is ala of the omer fits in the rostrum of the sphenoid. Rostrum of the sphenoid is wedge shaped and groove is formed by ala of omer. All these are present in skull bones. See, this is an example for suture. This is an occipital bone present in the skull and these are the parietal bones. Now, in between the two parietal bones, there is a suture, joint. There is a joint, okay? And this joint is called as suture or sagittal suture and another suture is there between the occipital bone and the parietal bone. This joint which is v-shaped, lambda shaped, this suture is called as lambdoid suture. All these are examples of fibrous joint. Coming back to this picture, see here this is again suture between the two bones. This is of a normal skull and this is little abnormal where the sutures have been completely fused with each other.